Hi, this is Stephanie Falk, a technician for the USDA ARS at the Eastern Oregon Ag Research Center, and I'm here to present an Eastern Oregon Ag Minute. I'm sure every horseman has heard the joke about how to make a small fortune in the horse business. Start with a large one. Well, that's this week I'll be hoping to share some tips to help horse owners save a little money. Right now, the horse market is at record lows. There are trained, registered horses selling for below $500. It's not unusual to see young, untrained, but registered stock selling for less than $100 a head. Unless you know you have demand for your offspring, consider holding off on breeding until the market improves. If you spend money on a stud fee, then factor in the mare costs, vaccines, deworming, training, feed, and other expenses in raising a foal, you're looking at a minimum of $2,000 on the low end. Some people can't even find buyers, so you might even end up with an extra mouth to feed. In this category, I'd also like to add that there's no such thing as a free horse. While there are definitely deals to be had, a horse that is free often has some health issues or lameness issues that will require extra money. In other words, you should look a gift horse in the mouth. Free horses can also have training issues that will often need additional time or professional training to fix. Since it costs just as much to feed and care for a quiet, well-broke animal as it does a horse with behavioral issues, it's often smart to spend a little additional money on an animal you can enjoy riding, not to mention what you might save in hospital bills. Today I'll talk about some ways to save money on feed costs. Of course, grazing is the cheapest way to feed horses, but many people can't do that year-round. Hay is the basis of most diets and will often be one of the bigger expenses. Start by not free-feeding horses hay if possible. A horse will waste up to 30% of their hay by sleeping in it and using it as a restroom. With hay higher than $150 a ton, this calculates out to a loss of $45 or more per ton. Another good idea is to feed by weight. Know how much feed your horse should be getting and don't give extra. Unless, of course, it's really cold, then extra hay is a good idea. Also, don't feed your horses so that they are over a body condition score of six. Not only is the extra weight costing you money, it's also not good for the horse's health. Buy the best hay you can get to meet your horse's dietary needs. Most horses aren't going to need dairy quality alfalfa hay, but by feeding them a higher quality hay, often idle horses or those in light work don't need grain, saving you the expense. Also, if you are feeding in groups, it makes sense to separate the fatter, bossier horses from the more timid and thinner horses so that the feed is going to those who need it most. There are a few areas where it's not worth trying to save a few pennies. For example, veterinary and hoof care. Regular deworming is cheap and well worth it. Ridding your horse of parasites will save you in feed costs and potentially vet bills. Would you rather spend $8 for a dewormer or $4,000 for colic surgery? Also, vaccines can save you money. Sick horses can't work and their care can be expensive. For some things such as tetanus, there is no cure. So the $15 vaccine cost would be nothing compared to losing a $5,000 horse. Hoof care is also costly, but well worth the money. Improper trimming and shoeing might result in a lame and unusable horse. Another way to save money for those horses who are just pasture pets or who don't go out on the rocks much is to not shoe them. But not having shoes doesn't mean you totally neglect the hooves either. Keeping a proper trimming and shoeing schedule will enable your horse to always perform his best and hopefully not lose any time to sore feet and lost shoes. Remember, in both hoof and veterinary care, prevention is always cheaper than the cure. There seems to be a never-ending list of equipment that horses need. A good place to shop is online. In addition to the usual discount tax sites, also be sure to check places such as Craigslist, eBay, or Tack Trader. You need to be careful when buying online, but you can often find great deals. Locally, check garage and yard sales. Put up flyers for what you have for sale and trade in the local tax stores and newspaper, and when possible, trade. You can also pack up all your equipment you'd like to sell and have a trailer sale at a local show or cutting event. Buy the best quality tack and equipment that you can afford and take care of it. You should get many years of use, if not a lifetime, out of quality equipment. And for the kids and 4-Hers, organize tack swaps with other parents. Kids often quickly outgrow their saddles and clothes. Why not pass them along to another family who can use them? And also find new and better fitting equipment for your own child. 
You can find some pretty creative ways to recycle things for your barn. For instance, you can make bridal hangers out of old tuna cans. Another popular thing to recycle is old plastic barrels. If they are food grade, you can cut them in half and turn them into cheap water tubs or even hay feeders. I've also seen them used as saddle stands. And what can't you do with baling twine? I've braided several stands together to make cheap and easy lead ropes. Also, except for the very coldest days, you can build your own insulated waterer. Surround your tank with plywood and fill it with straw or even insulating film. Although you need to be careful with this if your horse tends to chew on things. Cover your tank, leaving just enough of an opening for the horses to drink. This can save you a lot of money in electricity. Also, check out dollar stores. You can often find items for use at the barn. Lots of storage totes for grooming equipment, baby wipes, hairbrushes. They can all come in handy. Shoe organizers make great hanging brush organizers. Plastic under the bed storage bags are usually the perfect size to store clean winter blankets for the summer. You may also find bleach for cleaning water tanks and butterfly nets to scoop out hay and debris from water tanks. I use old towels to clean and dry sweaty horses. Old socks and t-shirts are also great for cleaning tack. If you're trying to grow a long, thick tail on a show horse, you can braid the tail, then use an old sock to keep it rolled up and clean. Strips of bed sheets braided into the tail can also help protect the tail hairs from breaking off. Hopefully this week you got a few tips to help you 